Thank you to the organizers of uh, this event. I hope you can hear me. I was told not to move around, which is gonna be the most difficult thing. And also to speak after my students, the, 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 the two experts that were talking most, they, they were my students. Uh, the lady, she was doing a diploma. I think Kaylin was doing a BTEC. I taught him fresh water. Therefore, maybe I'm revealing my age here, but uh, I've been around for a while. Johan asked me a couple of questions to answer. Johan, one of my difficult things is to stick to the questions. I always have my ideas and, uh, and, 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 and go wild. The, the first question was why conservation? I think uh, the, I want, I want to be honest here, not to lie. I never wanted to be a conservationist, never. I was not even aware there was such a field. Growing up in rural areas as a head boy and all of that, I never been exposed to conservation. I wanted to be an engineer, that, that was my first preference, to be a vet, my second option. Lastly, I wanted to be a quantity surveyor. Those were my interests in, 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 when I finished my matric. And I was sitting at home unemployed, not having money to go to university, have good marks at metric. And uh, I, I heard on the radio that the former Transkai Nature Conservation, that they are recruiting students to be trained as Nature Conservationists. And uh, I was lucky to be selected to be one of those students. And I got bursary and I was sent to college to study. And I became interested and I think conservation for me now, as Kaylin says, is, is, is my way, way of life. And I don't think I have any other life except conservation. I always brag to people that are, are, are coming into the parks and I say, you guys, you are paying to come into the park and I'm paid to be in those places, how lucky I am. And uh, usually you don't get, you're not gonna be a millionaire in terms of material, but maybe other, other needs will be met. Why I chose conservation, as I said, it was a default and I ended up in conservation. And uh, common careers when I grew up, and Moshe maybe will be my witness. You know, there were a few things that were designed for blacks or blacks are exposed to. You want to be a teacher, a police and, uh, and a soldier. And if you're lucky, you can be a nurse. Those were those were the things that were available, or you become a clerk in a department. Those were the things that we were exposed. And I think conservation chose me rather than choosing, choosing conservation. I ended up in conservation by now. Where this whole thing took me in life, I have privileges and and maybe some challenges in life. My parents never been to school, my dad and my mom, not even sub A. Zilch when it comes to, to schooling, they never been to school. But uh, my mentor today is my mother, brilliant woman, hardworking. Therefore, for me, education took me out of poverty. I think Moshe would be my witness. And uh, I think Moshe was in my class when I was still a teacher here. You know, when you are uneducated, the chances of survival are, are very slim. But when we grew up, there were still jobs and you could get a job on the mine. There were TEPA recruitment agencies all over the country and you can get, you can get, go to the mines. But fortunately for me, my mother pushed me to school and hence uh, I take care as a mentor today. And I think it took me out of poverty. When I see people being retrenched from the mines, retrenched from, all sorts of, uh, of careers. And I said to myself how lucky I am that I still have a job which is still on demand. Therefore, you guys you have made a good decision to take conservation. Conservation is a, is a forever business. I know 50 years time we'll still have conservation. And I know 100 years time we'll still have conservation. But it's gonna depend on you to defend. Conservation is like a war. You defend conservation. You don't sit in your chair and wait for someone to defend. We, we compete with other land uses. 
They want to build a mine. They want to mine some of our protected areas. They want to build fancy hotels in some of our protected areas. Therefore, you have to defend those places because it's not for you, it's for your future generations. We borrow this world from our children. Ms. O Dr. Ogluvi, she will tell you in her class that uh, we borrow this world. Therefore, we must try to keep as pristine as possible. Your background, my point about telling me you about my parents that have never been to school, I wanted to take this myth that uh, your background will determine your future. That's not true. And uh, I, I'm where I am today. If my background was limiting, I would be still sitting in Transkai being a head boy or head man now and doing almost nothing. Therefore, you must stop blaming other people. Don't blame your parents for what they are doing and it's not their fault. I've seen these blame games in, in, as I grew up. When, uh, when I was a lecturer here, yeah, I happened at one stage, I was an acting head of department when, when Mr. Porter was on sabbatical leave. I have to admit students and there's a criteria to admit students. And uh, we always complain that uh, the, 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 school, the high schools are, are not giving us good products. That's another blame game. We admitted they, are, they become our, our responsibility, Dr. O. o. If you admitted them at, 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 the, at the department, they become your responsibility. You don't have an excuse of blaming the, 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 the high school for giving you poor product. It's, it's, it's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. I've heard high school also blaming the primary school and the secondary school that they are giving us a poor product. And again, that's a blame game. They have admitted them. They are part of their, of, of their, of their assets. Therefore, they must look after them. I've heard this, the primary school blaming the preschools. So the preschools are not doing their job and they are giving us poor students. And I even hear the, the preschools complaining that the parents are giving us poor kids. How on earth are we gonna play, play this, this blame game? My point is that don't play, don't come up with, with blame. I've heard many people today, black and white, blaming the government. Oh, everything is the government, but no one is blaming himself. Can you imagine if all of us were blaming the government, we'll be poor people, sorry for what government has done to us, but other people are losing opportunities. I saw a guy from the unemployed realize that the, the traffic is a problem in, in, in South Africa, more especially in Pretoria, Joburg. That guy, no, 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 no shoes, naked, with, with barefoot, he directed traffic and people were chucking five, five rand, 10 rand, all of that. He saw an opportunity. Other people, what does they say? The government is failing, there's load shedding and all of that. That guy saw an opportunity, said, I can direct this traffic and I will make an income out of this. Let's use opportunity. As a conservationist, you are an opportunist. You are like a hyena, you eat what is available. And I'm the first to have metric at home and degrees and all of that, even to have sub A at home, I was the first to, therefore I'm, I was, I was, I'm privileged. What conservation has taken me, it has taken me from the homeland of Transkai and I was uh, headhunted to lead a, a, a protected area in the former Republic of South Africa. You know, we were, we were a country within a country. And uh, I was uh, headhunted to manage a reserve in Grahamstown as a, as a reserve manager from school. And also conservation has taken me out of formal conservation into an academia, into TUT. Uh, I became a lecturer for almost eight years in this, in this department. And uh, that also has helped me a lot. Uh, Lastly, I'm gonna talk about my education, my studies, where I studied. I never actually studied at TUT. Let me talk about this first. I was, I'm not a product of this university, but uh, the university have, have tried to claim me that I'm their product. They gave me for free for Mahala a doctorate. I never struggled in the classroom and tried to rewrite my thesis and revise and all of that. I got it for free from this university. Therefore, they claim me that I'm part of the furniture. And uh, I, I had a, a, an oral doctorate from this Department of Nature Conservation. I don't know whether is it, I usually said maybe the experience for me 
to define my experience is the mistakes I've made in life and, and the values that are, are really guided me through my life and through my career. And I'm always uh, saying to, my, to the people, I'm a very principled person and uh, uh, I don't smoke, I never smoked because I don't understand the value. I try to understand what is the value of smoking? I couldn't find that. To pollute my lungs, maybe? Is that a value? I doubted that. I tried to drink alcohol. And, and even that, I started saying, why do I drink alcohol? Really, why do you drink alcohol? I said to my kids, are you trying to be a mad person? To behave like a mad person? Is that the intention of drinking alcohol? Or is it recreation? And therefore, I, I couldn't find a reason why I have to do that. Coming to a tertiary institution, you won't have your parents. You will have to, you'll be on your own. That was Steve Bigo says. Black man, you'll be on your own. I'm not excluding you. South African, you'll be on your own. You have a freedom. If you want to come to class, you'll come to class. If you come wearing a hat, doesn't matter. That's a tertiary institution. Therefore, you, the buck stops with you, not with your parents, not with the lecturer, not with anyone else. If you want to come to class, you can, you can come to class. If you don't want, just sit in your hostel or in your room. But you will see at the end of the day, you will reap the fruits of sitting in your room. My advice to you, take everything serious when you get into institution. No one is going to spoon feed you. Anything that is going to be assessed, try to get 70%. Even if they say, no, 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 we just we want to make sure that you understand, score higher marks and uh, you will be a successful person. Okay, where I studied, there were no preschools in my village for sure. Therefore, I never went into preschool into a crash. Maybe that's why I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a top scientist. Primary school, secondary school and high school, I went to Transkei, which is called now Eastern Cape. Tertiary, I studied at the at a college called Fort Cox College in the former Siskai. There were there were these four countries within South Africa when we when we were young. There was a Transkei, Vandabo, Putatswana, and Siskai, and you used to carry passport to visit them or to visit South Africa. These two gentlemen are saying yes. They used to have passports like me. I mean, you're coming from Umtato, Butterworth. You're going to East London, you have to carry a passport. That, that's, that's history. I did my BTEC at Sarsfeld, which is now, when I did my BTEC, it was a PE Technicon. And uh, now it's called Nelson Mandela University. It's part of Nelson Mandela University. That's where I did my BTEC. I did my master's at the University of Free State. As I said, I received an honor doctorate from TUT in 2019. Thank you, TUT. You make me, you change my title. Now all of a sudden I become a Dr. Funda. Oh, geez. I'm still struggling to conceptualize that. The, universe, the, the, the education you on has taken me to different places, have taken me out of poverty, as I said, and uh, taken me out of the homeland of Transkei and the province of, 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 of Eastern Cape. And uh, I've visited universities or countries in, so in Southern Africa. I've been to Botswana on, uh, on, uh, on, on official trips to do some work. Last year I was uh, up at the Okovango and that corner where four countries come together. Wow, what an exciting experience. You get Zimbabwe, Botswana, Angola, and Namibia coming together. And uh, we canoed the Chobe River. And we saw thousands of elephants. Some of you become jealous. If you study conservation, you'll get into that. And I've been to international universities and, and different countries. I was at University of Montana for a couple of years in the US in preparation for a PhD, which I never finished because I always put my work first. And TU2 sent me to write a book on community-based natural resource management at the University of Florida. And I spent four, four months there and we published a book. They, were, they, they recruited young academics to, to write a book on, uh, on CBNRM. 
and I think that books are still used today in, uh, in, 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 in some areas. I went to the University of Maryland to look at uh, vulture conservation in Southern Africa and even in, in Africa, the continent as a whole. And I think maybe that, that noise either is load shedding or my time is up, Johan. <laughs> <laughs> the last place that I visited, I went to, I was uh, invited by the University of California, Merced campus. And as, a, as an elder in conservation, which for me was, uh, was something really, I never thought that I'm an elder already. I was invited on the leadership uh, uh, course where you have different countries getting together, send all their leaders, and these guys invited me to talk to, to really to bring some experience into, from, from, from Africa, from conservation into this seminar. It was really a highlight of, of my career. Uh, I went to, I landed at uh, San, San Francisco and a beautiful town, most beautiful airport I've, I've landed. And there's, a, there's an island there, we looked like Robin Island, exactly like Robin Island. And I even made a comment that, uh, the designers of these prisons that are in Ireland, it means there was one architecture that was designing that. 